comic book fans, welcome to a special edition of Cammy's Comic Corner, the book of the month for July. I'm your host as always, Cammy. Now, I have quite the killer and very haunting pick for the month of July. From Marvel Knights, it's Submariner The Depths, and it's written by Peter Milligan and art by Asad Rebic. And let me just give you a little backstory on, on Namor. It focuses on Namor the Submariner, and in my opinion, He's one of my favorite heroes slash villains in the Marvel Universe. The guy is a total badass, doesn't take crap from anybody, and he always thinks of his people first. And he can fly, he can swim underwater. I just think he's a, yeah, just total, 100% pure badass. So let's get into this haunting tale of uh, Submariner the Depths. Uh, yes, it's written by Peter Milligan. Uh, you might, might recognize his work from uh, his X-Force days with Mike Allred, and then there's Asad Rebek who did the gorgeous art for uh, Silver Surfer uh, Requiem. So these two A-listers have come together to produce this wonderful uh, book. The series came out in October of last year and finished up in uh, early March of this year, and it's been a five-issue miniseries, and we follow Dr. Randolph Stein, and he is a very famous debunker back in the 1940s. He'll go on these wonderful expeditions to maybe the Himalayas, and prove that like the Yeti doesn't exist, Bigfoot doesn't exist. He's just one of those uh, anti-cryptozoology people. Like he's always a man of science and says, "No, science over fantasy. It's, if it, you know, if I can't prove it exists, then it doesn't exist." So anyway, he's approached by fellow scientists to find this one uh, captain of this submarine vessel named Captain Marlowe, and apparently he, they have tapes of him claiming that he's discovered the lost city of Atlantis. And this kind of pipes uh, Dr. Stein's interest, and he goes, okay, you know, I'll go find what happened to Captain Marlowe, and go find if he finally did find Atlantis or not. So he uh, embarks on this journey in his own uh, submarine, and the crew there, they're a very superstitious crew. They say, you know, the farther we go down in, into the deep, dark depths, the more strange things happen to a man's head. He's not thinking properly. And there's this half-man, half-sea demon named Namor. So don't say his name when you're down here, because we're in his realm. Dr. Stein's just looking around like, are you guys serious? Like, you know, Namor, he's the, he'll be the jerk who looks in the mirror and says Bloody Mary three times just to freak you out. He doesn't believe in any of this, this nonsense. But anyway, uh, they're off to the Marinus Trench outpost. And while they're on their way down there, he has a dream of a, a Namor-like being visiting him in his quarters. And that freaks him out. And the crew says, this is significant, because when Namor visits you in your dreams, he has something special planned for you. So anyway, they make it down to the Marianas Trench, and apparently the crew down there have been slaughtered. Bones broken, blood splattered everywhere. And everyone on, on Dr. Stein's crew is just totally freaked out. No rampaging animals are down there. The only, only, only solution would be Namor. And Dr. Stein says, no, you know, let me just, feel, let, let me look at the film, because one of the crew members had, had a camera running, and they see what was captured on film. All you see is a winged foot. Someone with winged feet made this massacre happen. And us, the audience, familiar with Namor and his winged feet, is holy shit. What the hell is going to happen now? So they go out looking for the submarine, and they find Captain Marlowe's sub. And they find the only survivor on that submarine is Captain Marlowe himself. The whole crew is just listening to his tale as he tells that he was hiding throughout the entire time when Namor came on board and was ripping people to shreds. And uh, Dr. Stein looks at his footage of his so-called discovery of Atlantis, and it turns out Marlowe has discovered Atlantis, and, and Dr. Stein just can't believe this. He doesn't want to believe this. It doesn't exist. So he is caught trying to burn the film, and Marlowe and him struggle, and in the doorway we finally see Namor. And it is just so creepy, because throughout the entire time of the book, you see Namor in the shadows, or you see maybe just a foot, or just the eyes, or hands pressed against the glass, but you never see him in the flesh. Well, now we see him in the flesh. He doesn't say a word as he rips Marlowe to shreds. The crew comes rushing down because they hear the frightful screams, and they ask him, Dr. Stein, what the hell happened? And Dr. Stein, not wanting to the, the crew to know that he does exist, he goes, I killed him. It was me. I, I killed him in cold blood. 
and the crew, they don't buy that for a second. They look at his hands, they're all nice and dainty. There's not a, uh, an inch of blood or any marks on him. So they, they say, you know, you're, we, we want to see what's on the film. And while they're looking at the film, while they're watching all this footage of this beautiful city of Atlantis, Stein knows that he has to keep this secret safe. So he knocks out the captain of the submarine and pilots the vessel into a huge sea devil, which is like a dust storm underwater. Only if you get caught in one, the whole ship tears apart. So he escapes in an escape pod and watches the submarine be torn to shreds. And he, doesn't, he knows he doesn't have enough oxygen to get back up to the surface. They're 33,000 feet down. But he sees this creature closing in on him, and it's Namor coming at his sub before, before he finally passes out. Meanwhile, back up on the surface world, he's telling his fellow scientists that how he survived was no miracle, he doesn't believe in miracle, but uh, he was trapped in a pocket of air that was coming up from the ocean's uh, bottom. And he was saying, that's how he survived, you know, it's just science. And it says, oh, by the way, couldn't find Marlowe or what happened down there, but Atlantis does not exist. We could not find any trace. And so the secret dies with him. And Dr. Stein has to go on just trying to forget the whole event ever happened. This was a fantastic book. If you are a fan of horror movies, you would love this book. Because Assad Rebic's art, all of the people are... First of all, it's gorgeous art on this series. But all the people and all the objects underneath the water, you know, everyone's so light and, and bright while they're surrounded by darkness, not knowing, you know, what is out there. Namor is watching them, but you can't see Namor. And every time that you do see Namor, like I said before, you might see a, a, just a shadow in the distance when the light's on, or just, uh, just some eyes looking in through the window. And it is creepy as hell, because you know that there's a monster, something out there, watching them, but they just can't see it. So, Peter Milligan... I would like to see him adapt this into a movie, just as a standalone, because this is a Marvel Knights imprint. It doesn't take place in continuity. And if you're a fan of Namor, this truly is a classic. He doesn't say a word, and yet he's terrifying as hell. So, if you would like a copy of this, I have one up for grabs. Send me an email with the subject line, uh, Submariner Contest, to Corner at gmail.com. One winner will be randomly selected, and please, United States residents only. And a congratulations to Matthew Guy for winning the local uh, hardcover last month. And, it, you know, just a heads up, people, it m doesn't hurt your chances if you post on the forum. Hint, hint. So, yes, I mean, uh, email at kamiscomicorner at gmail.com if you'd like to uh, enter. Also, if you like any of the kick-ass t-shirts that you see me wearing on my normal review shows, head on over to www.deadlinegraphics.net and send Kelly an email. From there, you can, subs uh, you can see all his whole catalog of uh, different DC, Marvel, Image, Dark Horse t-shirts. You know what? I think I might just want to get a, a Submariner t-shirt just to walk around town. In. But anyway, there's only one name that I trust when it comes to comic book t-shirts. That's Kelly over at www.deadlinegraphics.net. And also, I'd like to thank my newest sponsor, Rising Sun Creations. You can find their website at rsc-online.com. They specialize in collectible toys imported straight from Japan, manga, and U.S. comic books, all conveniently located in one store and online store. So if you want more uh, manga, U.S. comic book, or collectible toys, head on over to rsc-online.com today. That does it for this month's Book of the Month Club. Uh, there's a little, I'm going to try to put a little uh, theme going on here where I'll have an uh, 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 independent title, a Marvel title, and a DC title, just to keep a rotation going on. So uh, this has been the Book of the Month for July. I have been your host, Cammy, and thanks for watching, people. I'll see you next month. Stronger than a whale, he can swim anywhere. He can breathe underwater and go flying through the air. Hello.